All right, you guys, it's Elevated here. Um, this is actually supposed to be April's video, um, but I'm releasing it a month late because life happens, of course. Um, I'm <laughs> pretty sure you should be used to that by now. Um, so yeah, this video, instead of like doing a, um, like picking a topic like I normally do and diving in, making a video about it, this one's actually just going to be a recap or a, um, like a chapter summary of everything I've gone through so far. Um, so yeah, we'll just jump right in. I'm actually going to be skipping the astrology stuff. Um, like I said, I'm not an astrologer. This channel is not supposed to be for astrology. Um, it was a really good, like, practice run for me, like, just learning how to make videos and stuff, but, um, yeah, not really, not really relevant <clears throat> to what I'm trying to make this channel out to be. So, um, with that said, uh, we'll go ahead and skip the first one. Um, I do want to say, uh, one thing in here that I do like about the first video is uh, um, where I talk about the ages. So I've, I've really only seen astrology talked about in terms of like personality tests. But to really look at it from this perspective of like, oh, um, every age or the procession of the equinoxes. So every age is 2000 years really helps to break down history um, pretty well. Um, but with that said, we'll just go ahead and go over to Jainism because um, there's a couple of things in here that I did want to highlight um, this first one is actually at, I wrote timestamps down, so that's why I'm having to do this manually. Um, so the nature of reality, basically, um, Jainism recognizes both perspectives of, cause like there's some sects of Buddhism that say that reality is essentially impermanent and some sects that say, uh, reality is essentially permanent and boot, uh, sorry, Jainism actually recognizes both of those perspectives and kind of basically says like it makes no difference either way um because um each perspective is limited so no matter what perspective you look through it's it's not going to be complete so yeah um and actually, this quote later on in the video actually breaks it down a little better. So it says, um, whatever judgment we formulate is incomplete, owing to our condition of bondage to this world. Um, sorry, the sentence right before that said, uh, we can only choose one angle of vision and this will always be partial and relative. Uh, it can be valid for worldly activities, but in no sense can it embrace the enormous complexity of reality. Um, so yeah, like, um, whenever, like, um, religious philosophers want to get in and bicker about the minor details, Jainism tries to cut through that, um, sophistry and basically says, well, none of this is really, um, relevant or it, 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 it not relevant, but like, it's, it's inconsequential because later on they like to say um like this idea of anakantavada um uh truth can be reached through different approaches so um whereas a, a certain sect of buddhism may say no like essentially reality is permanent in any uh, um portrayal of impermanence is just an illusion um other sects of buddhism will say the opposite uh, reality is essentially impermanent and any portrayal of permanence is an illusion and um jains are basically um they accept um statements of truth like that um under certain conditions. So like every, every, um, uh, approach to, th to truth, um, can be valid, but to Jane's it's only partly valid. Um, so that's why they don't try to bicker as much over, oh, well, no, actually the world is permanent. Oh no, actually the world is impermanent. It's like either way, whatever perspective you want to look at it, like you are still essentially um, unliberated um, or um, I wouldn't say enslaved, but like 
basically like there is a level of illusion um no matter what perspective if if you if you adapt a perspective completely like it's going to be illusory like no absolute truth is absolute basically um it's also kind of has to do with like non-duality like getting over the whole this or that yes or no black and white type thinking that uh plagues humans um and then we go ahead to 43 44 because uh nayavada is another good one um all propositions are true but only under certain conditions kind of breaks down what i was just saying um the error of absolutism is in establishing that only one possible naya or perspective is true. Um, so yeah, from the moment an asservation becomes absolute and excludes the rest, it is erroneous. Um, so yeah, that's what James are like. Uh, you're you're clinging too much to these ideas uh, of or like these. You're you're clinging so much to an idea that like you you assert it to be absolutely true when in reality it's not and any clinging of that is going to be erroneous um so that's non-absolutism that's not nayavada um and then siad siadvada is another important one 4531 Guess it's all the same um so this is basically where they say um an, an asservation is only correct when it is qualified by indeclinable notions um so all like like i said earlier all paths can be valid in a certain sense even false doctrines can lead to supreme reality if they are qualified by the term siyats, capable of destroying the venom in their absolutism. So yeah, James are the ones who say like absolutism is the is what's is is what is false, I guess. Even though like they it's 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 hard to explain because they do believe like in 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 permanence in some ways, in some perspectives. Like absolutism is true in some perspectives, but it is not absolutely true. Um, yeah, just a little kind of, kind of hard to wrap your head around, but if you watch the whole video, I, I break it down a lot more. Like I said, this is just a summary recap of these ideas, if you want to like look into this more. So this is, this is the system that they use to um, qualify every assertion. So every, every assertion, every siat, every perspective can be qualified uh and this is just um an abstraction like uh, hype not hypothetically um theoretically there could be like virtually an infinite number of parallelisms for every single statement of or perspective of truth but basically like um so yeah, you would say perhaps in a certain sense this thing in in fact exists. Perhaps in a certain sense it doesn't. Perhaps in a certain sense it does and it doesn't. Um, and stuff like that. This is what you would use. Um, the one that I always like to bring up is like nihilism. So um, nihilists like to say things like, well, nothing matters. Therefore, you can do whatever you want. Um, and that's that second part is where they get um where it gets dicey um so like nihilism nothing matters from a certain perspective or in a certain sense nothing matters that doesn't mean uh, you can uh, apply it absolutely and say oh nothing matters therefore everything is permitted um type shit um i think i said that in the video too because Yeah, so um, in the conclusion, okay, using Jane Lonick logic, one can prioritize and evaluate knowledge to free oneself from limiting beliefs like fear, wrath, greed. Um, 
Even if you can't exactly decipher how a limiting belief may be false, you can still take comfort in knowing that, at least from some perspective, it is in fact false. Um, so, um, limiting, like, okay, so saying nihilism, nothing is true, therefore every, anything is permitted. Like, it doesn't sound like a limiting perspective, but it, it, it does limit you in the sense that, like, it doesn't narrow down what you should be doing, basically. It's a, it's, it's a limiting perspective because it, it limits your capacity for reason, for logic, um, for um, pragmatism and stuff like that. Um, so um, that's what this video is really about, is just like examining beliefs and being able to um, decipher them and being able to to combat the like it like it said earlier the poison in their in their doctrines um this is probably uh, well apart from my first video this is probably um my lowest quality video in terms of like production value but in all honesty it's probably my best video just in terms of like strict like um knowledge and information if if you are able to apply like all of this if you're if you're able to look at it and and actually like apply it correctly you really don't need any other of my videos like this is honestly all you would really need um to kind of like keep yourself on the right path quote unquote um but yeah um we're going on to there is one thing i wanted to say about astrology um i kind of talk about it later on in the video um, where it's like, okay, so like each planet in a certain, um, perspective, in a certain, um, sign is supposed, is supposed to delineate, um, what lesson you're supposed to learn. Um, so for example, um, like a Saturn in a Pisces, like your lesson has something to do with, um, group think or um population or like just group minds in general um but uh, i the way i i like to look at astrology i'm i'm I'll, I'll i'll look at all of the possible um combinations of lessons so like every planet in every um constellation delineates a different lesson and and instead of just like looking at it as like, oh, well, I was born in, in, in with these planets and these signs, therefore I have these lessons to learn. It's like, again, that's pretty limiting because you can just look at them all and be like, okay, so all of these lessons need to be learned. Um, if you look into like reincarnation and stuff, that's they say they talk about how like every person is supposed to reincarnate through every sign. Um, just to learn all the all the spiritual lessons from them all and it's like well you can you can <laughs> I don't want to call it cheating but it's like you can like s skip ahead of the class and like read the next chapter in the book um, in a certain sense and just kind of get all your lessons from that instead of like having to live multiple lives <laughs> just to learn them all when it's like all the information is already there so yeah that is one thing I wanted to say about astrology um, that kind of that's pretty good um, um American Gods, this video kind of talks about, um, it's, it's, it's a half and half video. So it's half about truth drops in movies and music and stuff like that. And it's, um, but the main topic is about like gods and worship and how all of these things, um, happen. So I do want to skip a, a back to, and kind of like, just let this video play. Because this, this is um, one of the most um, important quotes, I believe. A king may move a man. A father may claim a sin. That man can also move himself. And only then does that man truly begin his own. And only then does that man truly begin his own game. Remember that howsoever you are played or by whom, your soul is in your keeping alone. Even though those who presume to play you be kings or men of power. Or gods. When you stand before God, you cannot say... The actual God. <laughs> but I was told by others to do thus. Or that virtue was not convenient at the time. This will not suffice. 
Okay, so basically, um, kind of breaking this down, whether or not you do want to believe in, like, an, a, a god as being, like, anthropomorphized, um, as, like, an actual, like, deity or something or not, like, um, later on we talk about how gods are worshipped. palm of their hands so they don't get bored watching the big one mm -hmm. time and attention better than lamb's blood yep so um she's she's playing the god um of media so like um television um and even like um modern day like a youtube and stuff like that so uh, she says um so whether or not you actually believe in, like, gods as being, like, she's an actual, like, character with, like, a consciousness and intention and action and will. Or if it's just, like, oh, you just want to look at TV as, like, oh, it's just TV. Either way, whether or not they actually, like, embody, like, actual deities, it still affects it still influences your behavior. So like we said earlier, or like he said earlier, howsoever you are played, however these um, people, these men or these, these men of power or kings or gods portray themselves to be, you cannot go to um, the actual God and say um, that I was told to do this. So like in terms of media, even though, like, it's not an actual, like, e even if you want to be completely secular and say it's not an actual god, media and television can still influence you. It can still take a hold of you and lead you astray from your path. So, so, yeah. That's, that's one thing that's really important to, I, tr I really try to um talk about my stuff both from like an actual like spiritual perspective so like actually believing in all of this stuff as well as from like a secular perspective because it it really does work both ways whether you want to believe in this stuff or not like all of these lessons are still very like they still apply no matter what the actual situation is. It's kind of like that Jainism where it's like, whether you want to look at the world as being essentially permanent or impermanent, n neither of those perspectives really matter because the lessons that you're learning are still the same. Um, so yeah. Uh, I think I go overhead to... Because I talk about Revolver, the movie best friend mm -hmm. you've heard that voice for so long you believe it to be you mm. Mm -mm -mm. and here they're talking about um ego consciousness basically um so like she said earlier time and attention better than lamb's blood um as far as like worship goes so how much how much time and attention do you actually bestow upon your own quote unquote thoughts? Um, and that, that, that really, um, that can change your perspective when you look at it that way, because it's like a lot of, well, I don't know if, um, you've been through it, but like, I've been through like depression and shit like that, where you really do have these invasive intrusive thoughts and, whether or not you like giving attention to them get almost gives them power over you if that makes sense um so um being careful about who or what you give your time and attention to, how they influence and affect your actions, your behavior, your spiritual path, and all that. That's um, that's what this video is about, if you want to check that one out. Um, I'm going to skip over most of the um, poetry videos. Um, 
But actually, this first one, if you just want a perspective on, like, why I do poetry or why it's, I believe it's, like, relevant for this channel, um, the first, like, two-thirds of this video kind of breaks all of that down. It also breaks down, like, why I started the channel to begin with. Um, so that first video, January past, um, for, uh, by poetry, that's if you want to take a look at all that, if you're interested in that. Um, <clears throat> My next video, seeing the forest for the trees. Random. Note. This one, it's the topic itself. It's a little. It's more. It has to do with just like um, psychology and human um, behavior, more so than actual like spiritual. Um. What am I trying to say? Like spiritual, any like a spiritual topic, but like I said earlier in that last video, uh, how ego and consciousness. Um, how much time and attention you give it. These are just some ways that ego and consciousness can actually like influence your own behavior. And the idea is basically, um, so whenever you look at a crowd of people or whenever you look at a certain person and instead of seeing them as an individual, you see them either as like, um, their gender, like a man or a woman or their race or anything like that. Um, Basically, um, how do I explain it? So you have the, like the platonic ideal of what a tree is in your mind. And you have, let's say you walk by a tree in real life. Um, so for the most part, what you're going to do is say, oh, that's just a tree. And kind of like um, clunk it together with that platonic ideal. So if you imagine that if you were to like imagine that tree later on in like in your imagination when you're not present in front of it it kind of has like a um what's the word kind of like a um a shadowy quality to it like it's not going to be perfect whereas if you actually take the time to examine the tree say like count the number of limbs on it study what kind and what species of tree it is this and that then it becomes more concrete in your mind or at least you 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 gain a much more accurate um perspective of it than just saying oh that's a tree and like dismissing it um and you do the same thing with people too um and everyone does this actually this is actually just like basic 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 um human psychology so don't think like this whole like racism thing that goes around oh you can't just claim people to be racist like well technically everybody is on some level or <laughs> wow wow let me let me cut that back no prejudice and bias most most people are prejudice and bias racism people have been like trying to redefine it but basically from my perspective racism has to have an element of hatred of evil intent of harm to it but like yeah so like everybody's everybody is um biased and um prejudiced in some way even if you think you don't discriminate you do and um that's what this quote is from um because the uh i talk about like the classical world and how they started doing double blind um auditions and actually uh what they found was that what the classical music world realized was what that what they had thought was a pure and powerful first impression listening to someone play was in fact hopelessly corrupted some people look like they sound better than they actually sound because they look confident and have good posture now the, uh, here's 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 the thing it's not only that people look like they sound better than they actually sound it's because they look better than they actually sound in your mind your brain actually processes that as them sounding better so like from your perspective in your quote-unquote reality that person does sound better based on um qualities that have nothing to do with the sound itself and that's that's on and these are these are high level musicians who who are supposedly supposed to be like the most unbiased like they they've been working with sound and music for years so essentially they think they can like 
pick up on like minor details and stuff like that. But actually, they are just as hopelessly susceptible to discrimination as everyone else. So yeah, this is a good. Like I said, it's not. This really isn't like a spiritual video, but it is. Like it is important. It's relevant. It's it. It helps you see like the limitations not only of like your ego, but like your psychology, your your um. Yeah, your brain and everything. Um, so, one thing I wrote down about this is like you can you can use this information um, several ways. So you can use it to like work to fix your discriminations, or you can use it to your advantage. Um, so like, for example, if you know that people look and sound better when they have better posture, working on your posture and stuff like that helps. Um, you know, there's that whole, um, what is that called? Like reverse behavior. So like whenever you feel good, you smile. However, it works in reverse as well. Whenever you like make yourself smile, it can, um, trick your brain into feeling good. Um, so you can use it that way. Um, so it's, it's, it's one thing, um, what am I trying to say? So like, yeah, you can use that in several different ways to your benefits. You can use this information to your detriment as well, where you can like kind of slid or, um, slide down into that whole, like, um, what am I trying to say? Like the whole black pilled, um, big towel, um, um, looks are better than everything else. So if you, if you take that perspective and you kind of go down that like depressive route where you're like, oh, I'm ugly and I'm never going to be like um, good looking and that's just going to seriously hinder me in life. It's like, uh, like it's, it's one thing to be aware of this information. It's another thing entirely to let it get to you. Um, this is just another example of like being in the world, but not of the world. It's like, yes, the world is bias the world is unfair um but it's like you you can't you can play to your strengths or you can wallow in your own self-pity basically um so like going back to jainism like this information what what is it what 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 does it do for your journey to know that the world is unfair? Like, is it really going to change, like, what you're here for? It If you're actually, like, down on an actual, like, spiritual journey, it really shouldn't. Like, how would, how would, <laughs> like, imagine if Jesus, like, saw the world the way it was and was like, well, people only admire, like, physical beauty and I'm ugly, so fuck that, right? Like, <laughs> he had so much more to do than just, like... Uh, <laughs> yeah like that would just be an awful way to fucking live your life i yeah um so that's kind of what this video is about um i highly encourage <laughs> it's funny because it's like the people i know who are not gonna listen or care about this video are probably the people who need it the most um so i think that's pretty funny um and then oh yeah this one um not in i actually talk about there was a comment in my American Gods video. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, Michelle Taylor. Yeah. Uh, so she just wrote this big old comment asking um, about a different perspective about um, something she heard from someone else. So like, um, this is the difference between um, like what level I'm at and what level most other people are at. It's like most people want to hear the truth of the world basically like they want to hear like um oh this world is a spiritual this or that um we're in the mind of god or the mind of a child <sighs> basically like just different like perspectives on what this world is whereas my perspective is like i look i kind of like look above it it's like no matter what the world is i'm looking at mm, like what I'm here to do basically. And it, it it's it's kind of weird because you would think that like the nature of the world would change your perspective and therefore change like what you are here to do. But 
if if you look at it like from Jainism, like on such a high level, where it's like it doesn't, it it shouldn't matter what this world is, as long if you're here for like a truly spiritual like experience, like no matter what the world is, it's gonna your your path should still remain the same, basically, and that's what that's what I like to. In being in the world and not of the world, it's like if if you're worried about what what the world is, like you're being of the world. If you're if you're just here to do your thing, um, in spite of whatever the world may be, like that's being in it and doing what you need to do, as opposed to being of it. So this this video kind of like breaks down that. It's also a really good video. Um, cause I tie, tie back to like the Jainism lessons. So I kind of like show you an actual, like real time, um, reaction to hearing about something else. So like, like I said in the video, she said, we had see if I can pull it up. She's asking me, what are my thoughts on, um, Levette's words regarding us being in the mind of, of a child or in the mind of God. Basically, what I said to that was, well, what does that do for you? Like, w- how does that change your understanding of what you need to do here? Like, <laughs> like again, with the nihilism thing, if nothing matters, like, are you still going to be doing the same thing or not? Like, <laughs> you know, um, that's, yeah, um, that's pretty much it for this breakdown i i do want to say that like like this is a chapter one summary and this is this is very like like i actually do have perspectives and ideas and understandings about the what the world is but i'm just going at it from like a lower level of like not understanding what it is and kind of just like being able to feel feel out feel around um for where you need to go e- even cuz like all like i said before all of us are born into this world not knowing what it is all of us are born in the same um boat like we're born um crying naked um in pain we're born in ignorance we're born in fear we're born in um animalistic dualistic bodies um, and we're born really not knowing anything about the world or how it works. And we're all raised by people who were born in the same perspective, not knowing anything about how the world works. So everything we're doing is just basically like guesswork. Um, but if you, um, like I said, if you, if you study this, um, chapter one summary, like it really helps to clear out a lot of like, um, Okay, okay, like um I'm I'm done bickering over details and I'm just like it it helps you like focus on what you need to be doing here basically. Um which is actually I think what chapter 2 is going to be about is like well what what to do and what not to do basically. So this is all like what to think and what not to think. Chapter 1. Um but yeah, I think that's about it. Um, if y'all have any questions, feel free to ask. I've got my May um, poetry video about to come out probably soon. My next video, my next actual like um, topic video is um, actually going to be over conflict. And I've got m- a lot of it, like I've gotten like the the bare bones of it, but I'm still working on like the PowerPoint presentation and how I want to order it and all that. So that may or may not be late. It's probably going to be late. I have like, what, five days left (laughs) to bring that out. So, um, we'll see if that comes out, but yeah, this is a chapter one summary. Um, like I said, Jainism 101, um, probably my least, my least, um, lowest quality video, but highest quality in terms of information. If you're going to go over anything in particular, I highly encourage you to go over this video, followed by American Gods, Seeing the Forest, and like a Mayo. So they're all actually in order in terms of like importance, I would say. So yeah, there you go.